My name is Drew Jones of Drew's Guitar Shop in Seattle, Washington, and today I wanted to talk about left-handed guitars, right-handed guitars, converting from one to the other, and basically kind of everything involved with all of that. Um, so we're going to basically kind of start by talking about what the important differences are in terms of intonation and, uh, you know, getting it playing so that it plays in tune and uh, so that it plays comfortably. And we'll get to talking about some of the anatomy as far as it, you know, is involved with acoustic guitars because there is some stuff to talk about there. So let's go ahead and start as far as like what the major differences are um, and kind of what needs to happen. So obviously when you are dealing with a left-handed to right-handed conversion, you know, you are dealing with this nut up here, and you'll notice that the string slots in the nut are carved from thickest to thinnest. And when you are deciding that you're going to go from righty to lefty or lefty to righty, you're going to have to swap that nut out at the very least, because what's going to happen if you try to go ahead and put just the strings into those same slots is that they're not going to ride correctly in those slots. And you'll end up with your low strings wanting to pop out of those uh, narrow slots of the treble strings. And you may end up with the treble strings kind of jostling back and forth in those large slots and kind of doing unhappy things, sometimes buzzing and whatnot. And so this is one area that will be very different um, when it comes to left-handed versus right-handed guitars. Um, when it comes to the headstocks on electric guitars, there is also some consideration, though this is less important. Um, when you look at the shape of a six on the side headstock, like a, a Strat, the thing is engineered basically so that the thinner strings get a longer string length, a longer string pull, and it adds a little bit of tension to that string, which is why that, that high tuner is at the very end of the headstock. Now, you'll notice, though, that uh, there are reverse headstock guitars. Those have been a thing that, has, that have been made by numerous companies, and obviously it didn't cause Hendrix any problems to have a strap that was strung up in reverse with the bass string going all the way up to that you know, far tuner. So a little bit of something to maybe think about, but it's not necessarily like a deal breaker like the nut is. So let's go ahead and travel on down the neck and we'll get to talking about some other things that are important. Now, you might notice that this saddle here has a bit of a tilt to it. That tilt is there for compensation. Compensation is basically uh, how far you have to move the contact point, the crown of that saddle, the saddle being this little white guy here that the, that the strings go over. Um, how far you have to move that contact point away from the 12th fret in order to get the string to intonate correctly at the octave. Now this is an acoustic, so it's not going to be perfect, but more or less you're getting an octave at that 12th fret with this guitar. And the reason that you are is because the more tension that is in the string, the farther it has to move back, which is why on these bass strings you see about an eighth of an inch of tilt away from the nut. Now, this is another one of those things that's pretty critical because if you just go ahead and try to string up this guitar for right-handed play, what you're gonna have is the treble strings with that far end away, not the bass strings. And what that's gonna do is it's going to produce a flatted octave on your treble strings and it's going to produce a sharp octave on your bass strings because it's not going to be intonating correctly. Your ones right here in the middle might be more or less close, but the extreme ends of that are going to be pretty far off. So far off that when you are making chords and you know trying to play with other people, the instrument isn't really going to be able to play chords in tune, especially when you're going up and down the neck you're gonna get a lot of crunchiness because the, the notes will, even if you spend all day tuning and you get everything perfect while it's open, as soon as you go to fret it, that, inter that, that interval is gonna be off. You're not gonna actually have an accurate note. And so, you know, it creates problems not only with playing with other people, but the guitar won't even play in tune with itself at that point. And so, when we are converting a acoustic guitar to a lefty, 
what we need to do is what's called a plug and recut. And so basically what we'll do is we'll create a saddle, you know, a saddle that will go down into that slot out of the same material as the bridge. In this case, it would be Indian rosewood, sometimes ebony, you know, whatever. Um, and we'll glue that down into the saddle slot. And then we'll go ahead and we'll recut the saddle slot. So in this case, we'd be taking this saddle, plugging it, and then instead of putting it in with a tilt like this, we would be putting it in with a tilt like this to make it a right-handed player so that the, the uh, treble strings are closer to the nut than the bass strings. So we wanna pull it that way. So this is a much easier thing to do on electric guitars, um, by the way, um, which is, I would say one of the reasons why electric guitars are much easier to convert to uh, a left-handed guitar or vice versa is because pretty much the big thing that you need to worry about is that nut. You get the nut changed out, the saddles are generally gonna be adjustable. The only exceptions to this are generally gonna be like Gibson style hardware where you have a tunematic that also has this tilt built into it. Um, but even then, you know, sometimes you can get away with it. There are some tunematics that are more cooperative and have more room to move those saddles around. And depending on how it was installed, you may have more or less leeway. But those saddles are at least movable, which makes it a more approachable procedure. Um, now, when it comes to acoustic guitars, there is one last real critical thing that I want to talk about um, as far as like the tone um, and playability of it. We'll get to some ergonomics here in a minute too, um, but I want to talk about the bracing. Now, you're all familiar, I would guess, with X bracing, which is this more modern style of bracing a guitar where you have a brace that goes all the way down like that, another brace that comes all the way down like that. But something that you may not be thinking about when you think about X braces is that the X brace pattern, um, as we know it, has what's called a lower face uh, brace, braces in it. And I'm gonna go ahead and draw out what that is. So this is gonna be a bad illustration. I'm not an artist, I'm a luthier, but we'll get a general guitar shape going on. So here's our neck, our sound hole, and here's our X braces going on like this. Now, the lower face braces tune the soundboard to react differently in different spots to different frequencies. On a right-handed guitar, if you're looking down on a transparent soundboard, what this is gonna look like is this. So the lower face braces are gonna be these two guys here. You've got your bridge plate here in the middle, the bridge spans here. Now, what this does here is, because these are connected to this X brace, it's shutting this down a little bit in terms of how it's going to react to bass frequencies. There's less there's less mobility in the top in that spot because of this connection, this junction between the lower face braces and this X brace. Whereas over here, the, the lower face braces are left open. And that open end is going to be conducive to much larger vibration. So in other words, that's your bass frequencies. And so you might notice if you pick up a guitar and you tap it on two sides, you might notice that there's a little bit of a different resonance. The, the treble side might resonate higher with treble frequencies and the bass side might resonate a little lower. Um, and this is the reason why. Now, here's the bad news for you lefties out there. This is actually the common brace pattern that you're gonna find in a lot of left-handed acoustic guitars. Just the way that production at factories works Things are generally done on jigs and fixtures. Um, and those jigs and fixtures are set up for doing one thing and the guitars kind of go through the process and uh, oftentimes any kind of left-handed guitar is going to be sort of an afterthought for that company. And so when it comes to, you know, these jigs and fixtures, some companies that are high-end, um, and I say some in, in the high-end category, are going to have left-handed jigs and fixtures for doing this in reverse on a lefty guitar, but a lot of them are not. 
So it's very important if you are a lefty, when you're going to buy a left-handed acoustic guitar, if it's X-braced, especially, and I'm gonna talk about other bracing styles here in a second. Um, if it's X-braced, you may wanna bring a mirror and a flashlight with you and drop it down in there and check. It's a very good idea um, if you are a lefty and, and going to buy an X-braced acoustic to specifically look at that thing with the braces, the lower face braces, how are they oriented? Because if they are oriented in reverse, it means that you're going to get kind of a wonky resonance with the guitar. So your bass strings are going to sound a little bit more trebly and nasally a little bit, and your treble strings are kind of going to lose a little bit because they don't have that they don't have the soundboard tuned to specifically resonate at those frequencies. And sometimes what you'll end up with is a guitar that like, you'll hear the bass notes, but the bass notes don't sound quite right. And they might like actually kind of overpower the treble notes or vice versa. It causes some kind of strange things to happen. And it's one of the reasons why some left-handed guitars just don't sound right. So if that's ever been a thing that you've run into, that may be a thing that's going on with your guitar maybe drop a mirror down in there, check out what the bracing is doing, because it's extremely common that even if the saddle is oriented correctly and the nut is, you know, the correct nut for a left-handed player, that the braces on the inside of the guitar are not what you need in a left-handed guitar. Now, there are other kinds of bracing, um, such as fan bracing. If you are a, uh, classical player, this is a little bit less of a problem for you. Your braces in a classical guitar generally look, you know, something like this. There's going to be fan bracing of some kind in there. But um, even though this is symmetrical, and if it were truly this bracing pattern, uh, you know, this should just act normally. It, there's, a, there's a caveat here, though, um, which is that in some of these fan bracing patterns, you will still see something like this going on to tune the soundboard. And so even if it's a classical guitar, which is kind of a safer bet without looking at the braces, you still will want to look at the braces. The only kind of bracing pattern that I would say is completely safe and going to resonate about the same no matter what the orientation of the strings in is a thing called ladder bracing. Ladder bracing is a thing that you see on older guitars and sometimes on cheaper guitars. So if you get down and looking at like uh, old harmony guitars from back in the day, a lot of times what you're going to see is this kind of thing going on. And this is ladder bracing. It kind of looks like rungs on a ladder. That's why we call it that, and I, at least I think. Um, and you got your bridge plate down here. And because this is completely symmetrical, this is gonna probably sound about the same no matter what way the strings are oriented. Um, I would still feel more comfortable checking it out, dropping a mirror down inside it, but it tends to be that these older guitars that are ladder braced will take a, you know, lefty to righty or righty to lefty conversion a lot better than some other things a lot more predictably. Um, and, you know, still sound about the same. There's no tuning here in the soundboard. These braces are, you know, just in here for reinforcement at this point. I mean, there is obviously some energy that gets transferred there, but, you know, you're not doing that, like, special tuning of the soundboard thing with that, with that junction or a crossbar or something like that. Um, the last thing that we'll talk about is kind of the ergonomics. Now... Obviously, you know, this guitar has a cutaway, and this is a really good guitar to use as an example of this because it's a cutaway acoustic. We're generally used to kind of seeing electric guitars with a cutaway on, you know, both sides frequently. Um, but, you know, acoustic guitar is a little bit common these days, but not yeah, quite as common. So we're going to use this to talk about it. Now, this cutaway is basically in here so that if you're playing up the neck, see, if I was playing this, I would have to stop here because I can't move my finger through the body. I'm not a ghost. But if I'm a lefty and I flip this over, I can get my hand all the way down here. In fact, I can even reach that last fret. Um, and when it comes to these cutaways, you know, this, this is pretty obvious, but I feel like I should cover it anyway. You might notice on strats how the cutaway below 
has a deeper cut than the cutaway on top. And so this was one of the things that somebody like Hendrix would have been fighting against when he was trying to use a right-handed guitar is that that top cutaway doesn't quite go as deep as the bottom one. And so even though there is a cutaway there, it is not one that's necessarily super designed for having a hand go all the way up the neck. Um, there may be some benefits to it in kind of getting your thumb over it, or just in terms of comfort, reducing weight. You know, there are reasons to do it, um, but the access up here is not is not one of them. And so when you're looking at like a, at maybe converting a Strat, that will be a consideration that you have to make, is looking at those cutaways and trying to decide if that's going to be something that you're willing to put up with. And... Um, Another thing when talking about strats and, and electric guitars in general, uh, and acoustic guitars incidentally, um, acoustic electrics, is where the controls are, or, are laid out on the instrument. Because on a strat, you're gonna be dealing with all of these knobs where your arm is going to wanna go over. And so there's gonna be that switch there that you may be bumping, there's gonna be all of those knobs that you might be bumping, reducing the volume, messing with the tone without meaning to. Um, and, you know, it's going to be the same thing with like a Les Paul style guitar, basically anything, because where we want our controls generally on these guitars is down, down here, because it's kind of out of the way of strumming. But up here, it's right in that spot where your arm is going to be going over the guitar. So that is a, a major consideration. And another consideration for acoustic electrics is that where are the where are the electronic controls usually on a acoustic electric? They're gonna be right here, right there, exactly where they're gonna be sitting on top of my leg. So, you know, if I'm sitting here playing it, you know, I may be touching something and adjusting something without realizing it. I could even break a potentiometer on one of these things. These, these acoustic electrics have little delicate little pots in them. And so, you know, it's pretty easy if you kind of jostle that back and forth on some jeans that are grabbing it just right that you could damage one of those pots or a switch or a slider or something like that. And so, you know, that's definitely another consideration. Now, personally, I do not like having these uh, preamps mounted in the side like this. I, I think there are better ways. But I'm just talking about in terms of what you generally see come out of factories. This is kind of common to see that these are kind of on there. Um, so one last, last itty bitty bitty thing that I'm going to talk about is the anchor point of the string. Now we talked about the anchor point of the string up here at the headstock. We're gonna to have to talk about the anchor point down here at the bridge too, both for electrics and for acoustics. Now you might notice that on some acoustic guitars, not this one, but on some, you'll notice that the tilt of the bridge is actually matched by a tilt of the bridge pins. The reason that that's done in, in most cases is to get an even amount of push down from the strings onto the saddle. This became a big issue for some manufacturers when under saddle piezos became popular because those pickups, those piezos, operate on pressure. And so if there's more pressure coming down on this bass string, now you see how that's closer, and less coming down on that treble string, you see how that's further away, it means that this is going to be much quieter coming through the piezo, or possibly it will even not come through the piezo because there's so much pressure on this side that it's kind of lifting the saddle a little bit. If you have that going on, that is another thing that you may need to modify about that guitar. And it's still the same procedure as you would do for a, a saddle, in that you would basically plug the holes with the same material. So you'd have some rosewood dowels or something and you'd put them in there, plugs, whatever and then you redrill the holes in the proper place that you need them. And it's not a, it, it, it's involved, it's invasive, but it's possible to do. I don't, I wouldn't discourage anybody from wanting to do that. Um, but, you know, it's, it's another step. It's another thing that you would need to do. The same as, uh, the same consideration needs to be given to electric guitars in terms of like where things are mounted. Because in some cases, what you're gonna run into is, some kind of mounting system that is also kind of canted in one way or designed to have the strings coming over the saddle at a particular tilt or a particular orientation that's going to be interfered with 
if that sat if that bridge is like turned around or those saddles are adjusted and that is a pretty important consideration as well uh, just because in some cases that may be a harder thing to modify than than you know just like swapping a part out or you know simply restringing it backwards um, most often on electric guitars uh, the way that the strings are attached are going to be pretty much you know the same regardless but there are cases when you have especially when you have like string through bodies where there's like a slant or there's like a pattern made basically anytime you see an anchor point for those strings beyond the saddle that isn't like a straight line that's you know parallel with what the saddles would be if they were all fully adjusted north or south i would be looking at that and being a little bit suspect of it before I decided to like go ahead and do a lefty to righty conversion. These are all factors that need to be thought about before moving ahead with something like this and all things that are important to consider as far as the differences between something that is left-handed or right-handed as far as an instrument. So basically that covers most of everything that I can think of. There's probably stuff that I left out and if I did, please feel free to leave it in the comments. I might make a video about it at some other point. Um, but I hope that this was helpful and educational for you all. Um, if it was and you feel like dropping me a tip, there's a link to my Patreon and my Ko-Fi in the description of the video. You can kick me a few bucks. It always helps out. Um, there's also a link down there to my reverb page where I sell some instruments and some other stuff. You might want to check that out. There's also a link to my, uh, my website where you can find my uh, contact info, my pricing info as well as a page that I wrote on caring for stringed instruments. Um, I have a new page on there that you can access if you go to my price page and click on any of the hyperlinks under fretwork. Um, that's basically everything that you could possibly want to know about fretwork. Um, Gold Evo, stainless steel, uh, compound radius, uh, going fretless, any of that stuff, you'll probably find the answer to your question in that page. And if you don't, like I said, shoot me a message about it. Let me know and I'll see if I can come up with something. Because I, I was trying to make that really comprehensive. It took me a lot of time and it was a lot of work. Anyway, um, like, subscribe, link, link this stuff around to your friends if they're interested. And uh, thanks for watching.